if you missed the lab on catalase, then this is the video for you. So what we do with the catalase lab is we start with a substrate called, called hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide is made naturally in your body, but it has to be broken down. So it's um, just like water, except it's got one extra oxygen, and you can kind of see the oxygen hidden behind here. So the white ones are the hydrogens, and the two red ones are the oxygens. And that gets broken down to water and oxygen. And this would happen naturally on its own, but it takes kind of a long time. So instead, we use an enzyme. And your body makes this enzyme to make this reaction happen quickly enough so you can keep living. The enzyme is called catalase and you have a lot of it in your liver. So I used to do this with cow liver, actually. I would take the cow liver um, that I just bought from the grocery store, put it in some water, grind it up, and uh, run it through some um, cheesecloth, and there would be your catalase. Um, I use leek now, actually, which is like onion, but um, maybe a little tastier. So anyway, you use leek, and you grind it up with water, and you run it through cheesecloth, and then you use the liquid from that. And so that gives us our enzyme. And then these two things, the water and the oxygen, are the products. Okay. We're going to do a lab today with leeks. And so to prepare it before the students come in, I would cut it up a little bit. You can do this experiment with cow liver, too. Lots of organisms have um, the enzyme catalase in them. But leeks are you know, inexpensive and easy to use. So all you need to do is grind them up to start with. And then you get some cheesecloth and strain it because you have to get the pulp out. So let's talk just for a minute about enzymes in general. Here's the reaction of an enzyme. You start with a substrate, which is the reactant when you do an enzymatic reaction. And then see how they fit together just perfectly? This enzyme catalase will only break down hydrogen peroxide. And I mean, yeah, so hydrogen peroxide will come in and fit just perfectly, and this is the enzyme substrate complex. And then here you end up getting the products. And the products in this case are water and oxygen. And of course, you'd actually have to do this twice to get your O2. So you'd have two H2O2 and two waters, and you'd get your oxygen. So this is the reaction, and notice that the catalase at the end looks just like it did in the beginning. So this reaction happens, and then the catalase can go back and do the reaction again, and then it can go back and do the reaction again. So its speed is limited by how quickly it can do this, but you know it can keep doing that over and over and over again. So what we're going to do now is look at the worksheet that you have to complete with this lab. So here's the worksheet that you'll be completing along with this lab. And what you'll need to fill in in the beginning, aside from your name, is um, that the H2O2 is the substrate. And there'll be a quiz on this the day after you do the lab. And then the products are water and oxygen. So you're going to write products right here. And usually we write the enzyme over the arrow, so we know that there was an enzyme that helped make the substrate um, become the, the products. So the enzyme that we used is catalase. Hello, science kids. Hello. Hello. Okay, your first job is going to be to take your pen and label each test tube. The first one labels zero, and the next one label one, and then the next one label two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Okay, so now what we're going to do is put one milliliter of hydrogen peroxide in every single test tube. And so we're going to demonstrate that. Who wants to demonstrate that one? Me. You're going to squeeze the pipette. I didn't get enough. I got okay. way too much. And what line do you put it up to? I put it up to that one line, Beautiful. but I got too much in it. It's okay. Okay, go ahead, everybody. One milliliter in each of your seven test tubes. So we finished with the hydrogen peroxide step, and now each of the test tubes has one milliliter of hydrogen peroxide in it. 
and my first student has already gone ahead and started. So what we're going to do now, in test tube zero, we put zero mils of this catalase that came from the leak in the first one, but in the second one we put in, it says one on the test tube, we'll put in one mil. Go ahead folks, you can get started. And at the very end, when we get to five or six, we might want to use this graduated cylinder to measure out that, because it's going to be kind of it a like lot steers, of... It uh, it keeps going higher and higher. It is, yeah. Okay, so what happens is you've got your hydrogen peroxide, you use your enzyme catalase, and you get water and oxygen. And catalase, uh, sorry, um, hydrogen peroxide and catalase and water are all liquid, but oxygen is a gas. So you can roughly measure this. It's not going to be perfect, but what you're going to do is start the timer for one minute, and then you're going to measure the bubbles that form. And so you'll see a foam forming, and what you're going to find out is that you get more of this foam forming, more oxygen gas um, made when you have more um, when you have more hydrogen peroxide in with your catalase. Okay, so what we've done now is put in the enzyme and the, and the uh, hydrogen peroxide, and you can see you get fewer bubbles over here and more bubbles over here. So now what each of the students is going to do is they're going to take their ruler and they're going to measure in centimeters. And all you're going to measure, folks, is the bubbles. You're not going to measure the green stuff underneath. So pick up the first one that says zero. How many bubbles do you have there? Zero. Zero. So you can write down a zero. Yep. The first one's zero. The first one's zero. Well, this zero is zero. Good. And then number one, can you measure just the bubbles? How many centimeters do you get? Four. Very good. So write that down next. How many did you get, yeah. science girl? Um, I got about... Um, four and a half. Good, so you can write 4.5. How about you, science boy? Four. Very good, so you can write the number four. And you can even kind of see that the bubbles, you're getting more and more and more bubbles as we go. But you have to be careful not to measure from the bottom. You have to measure just from the bubbles. This one's four, I'm moving on. Okay, good, so you can write that down next. And then we'll put all the data together on the board. Nice work measuring, and now you guys can write it all on the board. So here's our class data. I call blue. And you can see on the left, catalase. That's the amount of catalase in each t test tube. Right under the first column, William. Okay, so there's our data. I'm not going to say it's pretty, but there it is. And so the kinds of numbers that you're going to get, you should have about zero centimeters. Um, you're, you're measuring this part, the bubbles. Don't measure from down here. You're measuring this part right here. So you should have zero bubbles here. Let's say you have maybe 1.5 centimeters of bubbles here and maybe 1.9 centimeters here and so I'm making up data for the people who were out just so that you can get um, a rough idea and you can do some some graphing these are about the numbers that we would get you were group A so that was what you did group B um, used three and four mils instead and let's kind of estimate the bubbles that they got and then group 5 actually ended up only getting 2.7 centimeters. Group 6, you know, maybe it went back down a little, a little error here. And it's kind of leveling off here. Um, group 7 mil had, uh, let's say, 2.5 again. So, and I think there's a group 8 underneath. For 8, you can say 2.6, okay? So what you're going to do is graph this. And let's switch to this.
So what you're going to do next is graph this. And so you're going to measure uh, right down here. You're going to have the stuff that you actually chose. So this is going to be substrate. And these are the mills that you've poured out. So this is the part that you choose. Make sure not only to label this axis, but um, this axis, but to put the units in. And that's going to go from 0 up to 8. And then this is the part that you measure, the dependent variable. So this is going to be the um, oxygen that's produced, or the bubbles bubbles of oxygen. And you're going to measure that in centimeters, so don't forget to put your units in. And that, in our case, I think, what would we go up to 2.8 or something. So make sure your units are all evenly spaced. And you're going to get something that looks, whoops, maybe something like that. Um, and then you just need to answer the question. So what is a catalyst? A catalyst is something that speeds up a chemical reaction. The catalyst in this experiment is catalase. The difference between a catalyst and an enzyme, they're the same except that an enzyme is made in a living thing. So an enzyme is a biological catalyst. So all enzymes are catalysts, but some catalysts are things like magnesium sulfate or zinc or whatever. And they're not enzymes. Where does the enzyme come from in this experiment? It comes from leaks. What is the substrate in this experiment? That would be the hydrogen peroxide. Is the substrate a reactant or a product? It's a reactant. So H2O2 is the substrate or the reactant, and it produces the product, which is going to be um, water and oxygen. Write out the reaction as shown on page one. So that's just H2O2 gives you water and oxygen. And to make sure you have enough of all of your numbers, there you go. And I would write catalase on top so you know, catalase, that's an A, so you know that this reaction required an enzyme to go at any appreciable rate. What effect did the substrate concentration have on the product? Well, it increased in the beginning, and then it kind of leveled off. So explain this part of the graph saying that as substrate concentration increased, so did um, the rate of reaction. But then it kind of leveled off here because the active sites were filled, and so the um, enzyme could only go so fast. And that's your lab.